Hi everyone and welcome to Foundation Friday. Today, as promised, I am going to be ranking all of the new released Radiant Dewy foundations that I have recently reviewed on my channel. There have been quite a few new releases and they've all been pretty similar. So which one's my favourite? You are going to have to wait and see. If you're new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload new videos on YouTube every single week. If you find this video helpful or entertaining in any way, I would would love it if you would press that subscribe button, the like button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. So let's jump straight into place number four. This wasn't a fail as such, although maybe it was. It's one that I wouldn't really gravitate towards. This is not one that I'm going to be wearing on a daily basis anytime soon, but I know that that is probably not a very popular opinion. A lot of people love this and out of the four that I'm going to talk about, I don't think mine is a regular opinion. I think most people would have this on the top spot. I have to be different, don't I? <laughs> This is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation and as beautiful as it looked when I first applied it, this did not wear well on me. I was actually on a FaceTime call with one of my friends and said, what do you think about this foundation? And she went, mmm. <laughs> You always know if you've got yourself a good friend because they will tell you the truth regardless of how brutal their honest opinion actually is. This at first was the most airbrushing of the four foundations. It was also quite a smoothing foundation as well. It was very lightweight. It went on straight away at medium coverage. It had great coverage, probably the best coverage out of all four foundations. But this was so dewy by the end of the day and it looked really heavy in places. This didn't oxidize on me however which is a great bonus for this foundation but I didn't find that it was transfer resistant at all. In fact this transferred onto practically everything. This also looked the least natural of all of the foundations that I tried. So although it is beautiful and it's some people's ultimate favourite. It won't be mine anytime soon. Coming in at place number three is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. This has the heaviest consistency of all four foundations, but it didn't feel heavy on the skin. You do have to be careful how you apply this. You must apply this in very thin layers. If you apply a lot at a time, you get into a little bit of a cakey mess. This is the most radiant out of all of the four formulas. It was airbrushing and smoothing. If I applied it with a sponge though, that is definitely my method of choice. If you apply too much of this at once, it does travel into smile lines. So again, thin layers is key. This is not one for anybody with seriously large pores that they want to hide because this does increase the visibility of those pores because it is so, so radiant. This also increases the visibility of any texture that you might have on your skin. So just be warned and if you do have large pores and texture that you want to disguise, this probably isn't going to be the foundation for you. This also isn't for anybody with a dry, flaky skin, but it was great on my normal dry skin and it wore beautifully throughout the day. This is long wearing, but I had to wear a powder on this to dull down the shine a little bit. A setting spray was also a definite must if you are a glasses wearer because this sort of caked up under underneath the nose pads of my glasses. It's not completely transfer resistant, but it's comfortable to wear and I definitely would be okay wearing a scarf with this as long as I had a setting spray on. Again, this is another formula that didn't oxidize on my skin. So another positive for this foundation. It's a really nice foundation. I've worn it quite a lot, but it's definitely not my go-to. Okay, so the second and first spots was agonizing to make a decision on. It's taken a long time to whittle it down to the second and the first spot because I love both of these foundations and there's very little between them. 
but I had to make a judgment call and that was all on personal preference and when I sat in my makeup chair which was the foundation that I wanted to use more on a daily basis than the other. So jumping in at the second spot is the Chanel number no. one. This is seriously luminous and dewy. It reminds me of the Dior Forever Skin Glow, but after you've worn it for a good three hours, it's that level of dewiness and it does get dewier throughout the day. It has a lovely consistency though. It's very flattering and lightweight on the skin. It's not tacky to the touch as well if you use powder, which I felt like I needed to once again to dull the sheen down a little bit. It was just slightly too dewy for my liking. This didn't sit in fine lines or wrinkles though and I got a good 10 hours wear out of this. It's great on my dry skin. It was beautiful at the end of the day. No dryness, no flakiness at all with this formula. It's also not as temperamental as some of the other foundations that I tried with regards to what you can apply this on top of, the skincare that you use, the SPF that you use. I thought this was really, really simple. It just went with all my regular products. So if you've been watching my foundation reviews for the last couple of months, you'll know which foundation made it into the top spots. This is from Estee Lauder. Now don't fall off your chair, everybody. There are so many people that really dislike this foundation to the highest level. I think with this one, you either adore it or you hate it. And I really wanted to hate this. I was gunning for this before I'd even tried it because this is the replacement for my beloved double wear light that has now been discontinued. I loved that foundation. It was just the best foundation ever. It was so nice on the skin. So I didn't wanna like this, but I so do. I just feel like it's extremely flattering on my skin. It's so lightweight and it also allows a little bit of the skin to shine through, which I really like. So you can shear this out, but you can also build this up as well. So it's seriously versatile. This is a really loose formula. It's buildable, it's smoothing, it's slightly airbrushing, but not the most airbrushing out of all four foundations that I've been trying out. It's a natural luminous matte, very flawless and skin-like it doesn't oxidize, there's no cakiness. I don't think it's transfer resistant. I get eight to 10 hours wear out of it. It does get shiny and it also has a little bit of an oily slip to the surface of the skin. There is no oil in this formula, so it's definitely not oil on the surface of the skin. But if you've tried this, you will definitely know what I mean. There's a sort of silicon slip to the surface of the skin, which isn't unpleasant but I don't overly like it either. I didn't feel that this was transfer resistant unless I dusted this with a little bit of setting powder and also sprayed it with a little bit of setting spray so that's definitely something to bear in mind if you do like a transfer resistant formula but it just looked lovely and skin-like on my skin. It did get shinier throughout the day. It's not my ultimate favorite. This is not something that I'm going to be reaching for every single day because quite frankly, I now prefer more of a natural matte foundation than a dewy radiant foundation. It's a turn up for the books I know. A couple of years ago, I would never have worn a matte foundation. And now I'm a little bit bored of trying Radiant Dewy Foundations. They seem to be coming in spades. They need to stop now. It's a beautiful foundation all the same, looks stunning and is definitely in my number one spot. This is also fragrance free. So Estee Lauder are learning something about their customers. So big tick to them. So that's my ranking of all of my recent Radiant and Dewy foundation purchases and reviews. I'm actually quite surprised myself. I would not have guessed that the Estee Lauder Double Wear Sheer would be in my top spot. But I have to stay true to myself. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful in some way. Do let me know what you've thought about it in the comment section. Which one of these four foundations was your favorite? 
and why. Do let everybody know your thoughts and experiences in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.